Hi, friends. Today, we're going to talk about money mindset a little bit and really talk about stability um, because you know that I am a big believer in selling, but I think making money in your business, making sales, all of it can be very difficult if you don't work on your money mindset and receiving money um, and talking and thinking about how you feel about money. And so I just want to open up the table and create this safe space, create this this week for you. I hope this is a week where you can just dive in a little bit further into your money mindset, what you believe, what you need, because I think It can be hard to do, but I just want to let you know this is a safe space to do it. It's okay to get messy. It's okay to dive in. I would say about three years ago, about two years into my business, I really went full bore into like, okay, let's do this money mindset thing. Let's figure this out because I really did not feel a lot of money stability, even though I was making a lot of money in my business. Um, And I feel like it was really a six month period of exploration for figuring all of this out. And so number one, I want to give you the shortcut. (laughs) Number two, I want to give you permission to just kind of dive in. Maybe you need to start your six month adventure with money. Even just ask yourself right now, what's whenever you're listening to this episode, what's six months from now? right? If you're listening to this live, you're listening to this at the end of the year. So maybe you pick like summer of next year and maybe you just give yourself permission for the next six months, not every waking moment, right? But I'm really going to let myself unfold around this idea of money mindset and what I need to do to expand my income in this next season with more ease. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story around this. um, And I hope that it is useful to you. Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. I was at a place where I really didn't feel very stable or in control of my business finances or personal finances. Um, And I would say even before I started my business, I didn't feel very intimate with my money. I didn't really look at my money a lot, right? I wasn't a huge spender, um, but I didn't have a lot of money goals, right? Um, My partner and I at the time had like, were able to like save and buy a fourplex, which is I'm so grateful for. Um, But beyond that, like I didn't really feel in control of my finances, right? So I decided to start diving in. And as you know, I like to start any sort of intention with an affirmation. So the best affirmation I could come up with is, (laughs) don't laugh at me, please. I have complete control of my money. (laughs) <laughs> and the reason this is funny is because like we don't have, this is like so like me to want control of it, right? But the truth is we don't have control over anything in life. So I was like trying to manifest complete control of money, but that's just what I had. So I had to start there. I'm a big fan of like starting with the affirmation, your best affirmation, and it's going to morph over time, right? So I was affirming this every day, doing my mindset work. And then a few weeks in, I realized like, oh, you know, I don't want complete control of my money because we don't really have control of anything. But what I do want is more stability. I was craving more stability. Well, I mean, in my life in general, it was a very rocky time for me personally. But with my money, I was craving stability and I really was not getting that, right? Maybe for you, it's something else, right? Maybe it's like you're really feeling unconfident or unworthy, right? So I just take a minute and ask yourself, like, what am I feeling when it comes to money? What do I wish or what do I think that more money would make me feel, right? Um, so for me, I was like, I was craving more stability. So fast forward six months and what I realized that I really desired with my money was A, a bigger savings account and B, more intimacy with my money, aka looking at it every week, right? But it really took me three to six months to figure out those were the two actions that I was craving for. 
savings account and looking at my money every week. So if you're not doing those two actions, you may just want to try those to see if those are it for you, right? But I think there's beauty in really going after this because your actions may be different, right? Your money actions to meet your money needs, your stability, your worthiness around all of this may feel different. But that has really worked wonders for me. So I'm going to dive into both of those um, a little bit more. So the first one I realized, I didn't realize the looking at money thing, but the first one I realized is like, okay, so every month I make a different amount of money in my business, right? When I had a day job, I got paid a certain amount of money every single month on the dot, period, right? When we go into entrepreneurship, it can be really weird to make a different amount of money every month, but I just want to normalize it's normal for there to be a different amount of money coming in every month, right? Because some people pay in full. Some people, you may have a launch, right? Ideally, your money is going up every single year annually. Ideally, it's going up every quarter. But when you think about big businesses, like it's normal for money to fluctuate, right? So for me, what I realized I was craving was not necessarily perfect, consistent income on the inflow. I was craving consistent money on the outflow, AKA what I paid myself, right? And the way that we do that is by number one, making money in our business. That's important. The second part for me was realizing like, oh, I need a business savings account, right? (laughs) And I didn't realize this before. Oh, I need a savings account in my business. For me, my first um, business savings account goal was 25K, right? Having 25K business savings in the bank, I felt like, oh, that's what's going to make me feel good so that if I do have a down month, I know I can still pay myself consistency. That's where the control comes from, right? Oh, I can control how much I pay myself, even if I can't control how much money is flowing into my business, right? And maybe for you, you start with a really low amount. Maybe you just start with a thousand dollar savings account, whatever it is that feels like that good buffer. But for me, change everything in my business everything, right? Because from that place of feeling stable, you know, it's the easiest to manifest more money when you're not feeling scarce or grabby around it, right? Not that you can't bring in money even when you are feeling anxious or um, overwhelmed when it comes to money. You know, I have a podcast episode that's called um, how to make money even when you're having a bad day. I'm a big believer in that you can make money no matter what. But I do think it's easier when you're coming from a place of stability, of worthiness, of whatever it is for you. And so just looking at what you need for those things. Okay, so first thing I realized was that, right? Okay, I don't need control. I just need stability. That's gonna come from A, a massive savings account. Number two, I realized a little bit later is I need to be looking at my money every week and what's coming in and what's coming out and really looking at that inflow intimately. So I tried a lot of different things. I tried really complex, fancy software and it really overwhelmed me. <laughs> I've tried I've tried probably like 15 different types of softwares, right? Maybe at least 10. And so I think it's permission, like it's going to be messy. You're not going to figure it out, right? But it's just like, you're going to dive in. Eventually I landed on this app. It's called Lunch Money. I am obsessed. It's super simple. So if you're looking for something very complex, don't do this one, right? It's not, it, it is a light budgeting app, a light projecting app, but it's mostly just tracking, for me, for me feeling stable with my money, what I realized what I most needed is just awareness. Literally, that's it, right? And so for me, it means every Friday sitting down on my little lunch money app and looking at what I spent and categorizing it, right? It takes about five, maybe 10 minutes a week to look at like, okay, what did I buy on Amazon this week? <laughs> oh yeah, I bought that thing, right? Okay, how am I gonna categorize that? just so I can have awareness and intimacy. Number one, so I can catch errors, right? But for me, it's just literally looking at my money every single week personally. That's been the biggest game changer. I don't always perfectly follow my budget, right? And for you, you may love budgeting. That may be a big thing for you. But for me, it's the awareness and the looking and the seeing and the reflecting. Do I like how much money is coming in? Do I like how much money is coming out? Do I feel like how, how I'm spending is aligned with my core values? Am I giving generously, right? How much money am I spending on myself, on my children, right? All of that is just useful, the awareness. Those are my two things, really. Savings, 
for my business, for my personal life, and then also just the looking and the awareness. Personally, every week, and then professionally in my business, every single month, I look at what comes in and out of my business finances. And to be honest with the business, I don't know if I would do that without accountability. I have an amazing bookkeeper, um, and every month we sit down on a call, and he just sits there holding me accountable. <laughs> While I look at everything he's categorized that's come in in my business and that's come out in my business. And it really, again, only takes about 15 minutes a month um, to look at all of those things. But if I don't have him on the phone with me, I'm not going to prioritize it. And I feel like that accountability is so helpful for me, again, just to be check if there is any errors, make sure he did everything right, but also f- just to be present with my money. And I think, I don't know, a lot of us, I think, aren't able to, I know for me, I wasn't, just be comfortable looking at our money without judgment and not making it mean anything about us, right? Maybe you had a great month, awesome. Maybe you had a horrible month in business, it doesn't mean anything about your business. And I think the reason we refuse to look at our money is we are so hard on ourselves. We are so judgmental. We are so critical. We are so enmeshed with our money, right? Instead of being like, yeah, money is a tool. Money is awesome. But also money doesn't mean anything about me, right? Money doesn't mean anything about my worthiness. And so really creating such a safety for yourself around looking at your money. And I think we think, you know, kind of like I've talked about this before, the belief where like on your birthday, if you say your birthday wish before you blow out your candles, it's not going to come true. I just think that's just not like we need to know that the more we familiarize ourselves with our desires, the more they're going to come true, right? The more you're intimate with your money, the more you're going to call in. And I get that it's easy. I've definitely had seasons in my life in my business where I put my head in the sand like an ostrich. Um, (laughs) when it comes to my money. But I would say like now, two years after really that journey of this, I am just so, and it's always evolving, right? But I'm just so thankful that I dove in. And I would say like three months into like my money journey, I didn't want to keep going. I was like, am I ever going to figure this out? Am I ever going to figure out the software? Am I ever going to figure out the thing that works best for me? But I just want to look you in the eyes or in the ears and say, you will. It's worth diving in. It's worth getting familiar. And I would say the metric is if you're like, should I work on this or not? I just want to say like, how do you feel about your money? How do you feel? Do you feel good about it? Right? Do you feel stable? Do you feel worthy? Do you feel comfortable? Right? Not perfect, but do you feel um, good? And I just want to say, if you don't, it is, you deserve to feel good about your money right? Not just for this business, but in your lifetime, really as a woman, I really feel like, um, money is one of the, I just feel like women need more money, especially generous women need more money because money at the end of the day is a tool. It's a resource. It is power. And it is just going to amplify your beautiful heart, allow you to do more in the world. Um, and so if you don't feel good about money, take this podcast episode as the nudge that it's time to dive in. It's safe to dive in. And the biggest and best way you can do that is just like start diving in and getting messy, right? Whether it is, you guys know, in my mastermind, Sell With Heart, we have a lot of modules around money mindset, even though it's a sales program, right? Sales becomes so much easier and so much less heavy when we do our money mindset work, when we get familiar with money, when we really dive in. And so I just want to encourage you, number one, to apply for Sell With Heart, apply for support if you want my support around this but also just commit to yourself that it's time to dive in. It's time to dive in. And having the belief, whether it takes one month, whether it takes six months, that you can start to feel really good about money and you can start to manifest and call in more and more money into your life. Just take a minute and and just let that sink in for a minute, right? It's safe for you to make more and more money. It's safe for you to to overcome some of these money mindset blocks. And a lot of this stuff is personal. A lot of this stuff has to do with, you know, stuff that happened to us as kids or beliefs that we picked up or beliefs that other people in our life have around money. Money is messy, right? But I think I just want to say it's safe to dive in because I know you will come out the other side feeling like this rock solid woman. And I want that for you. I That's definitely how I feel, right? Um, and so I just want to give you permission. Dive in. 
Um, and really the first thing you can do, I would say like a first exercise around this is just kind of open up a blank page in your journal or open up a blank Google doc and really start to brain dump around how you feel about money, what you think about money. Um, so for me, right, a few years ago, I would have written something like, I feel out of control when it comes to my money. I really crave stability when it comes to my money. I really want complete control over my finances, right? It, again, not making it wrong. You have to start with what's on your mind to get to some of those core things, right? Right knowing that at the end of the day, you're going to have some really clear actions. Again, my actions were savings account, looking at my money every week. And so you can even try those, right? You can create a little savings goal for yourself. You can decide to start looking at your money every week. Um, but it might be something different too, but just opening up your heart to exploring this more, exploring that you can feel so good when it comes to um, feeling good about money and just I think the other thing, yeah, is not having any shame around it, just releasing guilt wherever it feels safe, whether it's in your journal, whether it's with me, if I'm your coach, right? Whether it's with a friend, um, just opening up that conversation. I just think we don't talk about it enough, right? So just allowing yourself um, to do that. Okay. I would love to hear, hopefully this was useful for you as you just think through um, creating more of a beautiful, intimate relationship with money. Maybe you even want to write a letter. Maybe you want to say like, dear money, and just write how you feel. I write so many letters that I don't send you guys. It's like one of my favorite tricks, right? <laughs> one of my favorite coaching tools is just allowing yourself to kind of unfold how you feel around that. Okay. Let me know. Feel free to tag me on Instagram, post in the Facebook group. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from today's episode, or feel free to shoot me an email if it feels a little more personal. And I would just love to hear what comes up for you. And just trusting that as you allow yourself to crack this open, that there is just more and more abundance for you in the next year. Yes, money, but also in your relationships, in your health, in your happiness, right? Really just trusting that as you dive into this money piece that you're going to see shifts and transformation and abundance and happiness really pop up in all of the areas of your life. And I just want to affirm one more thing for you. I just want to affirm that you can trust yourself with more money. You can trust yourself with more abundance. You can trust yourself with this next chapter of success. Even if you look a little different, even if you think a little bit different, right? Just trusting that it's, you are going to, your life's going to get better and better and better with more money. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart-Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free. And I cannot wait to see you in there.